Did you know that you are eating food made with methane gas? 31 million tons of hydrogen used for fertilizers are made by methane gas reforming. Isn't it disgusting if you think of the smell of the sulfur we put in the propane, for instance, or just the thing that this is like comes out of an oil bubble in the ground? But anyway, the reason why we need this ammonia is that the nutrients in our fields have been used up by centuries of farming. So the farming nowadays inputs all the nutrients the plant need to grow in the form of ammonia and spread it on the fields. While the plant grows, it uses up the same ammonia we just put in and then we eat these fruits for dinner. But there is a nicer way, a green way, a sustainable way to make ammonia as well. Of course you all know the Volks electrolyzer, which makes hydrogen from renewable energies. Could be wind, could be PV, could be hydro. What has that to do with ammonia, organic fertilizers and food? How does green ammonia production work? For green ammonia you need nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen has the chemical abbreviation of N and hydrogen is a molecule and is abbreviated by H2. Ammonia, which is the fertilizer we need, is NH3. So, is it possible to have an electrolyzer with integrated nitrogen extraction and on-site ammonia production? Yeah, that sounds weird, but it is actually possible. So, if we take a look at our stack, our electrolyzer, it produces the hydrogen. It's easy. So, I make the hydrogen in green okay this is one output we have but the electrolyzer also emits heat why do I say that because yeah the second thing we needed was the nitrogen to make nitrogen what do we have to do we have to know what we are working with and where it comes from and nitrogen is all over this place Nitrogen is 80% of our air. And the good thing about nitrogen is it condenses it at a temperature of minus 77 degrees centigrade. Which is a temperature we can easily reach. How can we reach low temperatures? With refrigerators, of course. So we have this waste heat. PEM electrolyzer works at 80 degrees centigrade. You might have heard of absorption refrigerators in the camping sector. There are these domestic absorption refrigerators which you can power by propane gas or electricity. Sometimes it's useful when you're camping you use the propane when you are off grid and you use the power when you are on a camping site. And you get uh, cool fresh beverages. You can check out the article on absorption refrigeration on Wikipedia. I will just make it very simple. We have two containers and in this container is a solution of funnily ammonia and water yes no joke so this ammonia solution will will evaporate by normally it's 90 degrees but I think we could do it with 80 degrees from our electrolyzer as well if we work on this process and there are internal pumps pumping around different 
concentrations of nitrogen so that at this point the solution evaporates and if something evaporates we know we get cold temperatures. If you go out of the water after swimming and there's a wind blowing you feel very cold <laughs> and that's actually the thing so the solution evaporates and we can get this cold temperature out of it. Normally it's not that low normally minus one or something but we want to have minus 77 let's say we get out of this process we get minus 20 yes so we put in a second refrigerator which is a normal compressor where we have a the compressor and the evaporator and here we have two heat exchangers and we put in a little bit more of the energy we have through solar and wind and hydro and then we hopefully we get at this side we get minus 80 degrees Celsius so what we do now is we put a fan and blow air over the heat exchanger and what happens the nitrogen in the air will call dense and fall as a liquid into our tray and we collect it in a pressure cylinder let's say it's full until here and it is minus 80 degrees then we close the valve and the temperature rises naturally the nitrogen would like to evaporate but it is a pressure vessel and the nitrogen cannot evaporate so now we have our nitrogen for our ammonia production the hydrogen we have from the electrolysis of water now how to combine them you can read the article on the Haber-Bosch process. That's the, the way it is actually being done in big refineries or big chemical plants. It is a huge process with high temperatures and lots of containers uh, which have different jobs to do. But when I did this research I found a Japanese company I would like to introduce you which found out a process which is called electrite catalysts the mechanism of ammonia synthesis by electrode catalyst works as follows and they have this nice schematic you see here which is like a winter wonderland there's not written which catalyst this is at what temperatures this happens but the magic happens so the business case for this electrolyte catalyst is that it is decentralizing the ammonia production and that's actually also what the Fox electrolyzer does it decentralizes the hydrogen production or the energy use from the traditional way of consuming it, buying it at a shop or buying it at an energy provider, to producing it yourself. They have a beautiful 3D animation of the what they call small-scale on-site ammonia production module using Tsubame BHB's electrolyte catalyst. And if you take a really close and precise look, you might be able to see these people here, yeah? So, I'm not an expert, but I think maybe this is a 36-foot container with or two 36-foot containers on top of each other. So, 
we have this magic machine which is inside two C containers and we have our Fox electrolyzer which is not even two feet high one feet deep two and a half feet wide So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is on-site ammonia production for organic, organic fertilizer would be great. You know, you could have like agri-photovoltaics, which is photovoltaics over crops. You could produce your hydrogen and you could produce organic fertilizer for the crop. The ammonia synthesis by electrolyte catalyst could be the future of on-site ammonia production, but it is still very big. And if we think of all the things we had here, so we need the electrolyzer, we need hydrogen cylinders, we need the energy, the electricity. Let's say I make the electricity in pink, the electrolyzer takes electricity, this pump takes electricity, our traditional compressor refrigerator takes electricity, and I'm sure this container also on top here needs electricity. So we need a huge solar array, we need the absorption cooler here, we need the compressor cooler here we need the fan blowing enormous amounts of air yes because we are talking about a density of nitrogen of 1.2 gram per liter or 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter if you remember from the hydrogen price list one cubic meter of hydrogen is around 90, 90 gram. Yes, we calculate all these calculations here are made with a density of 0 0.089 grams per liter for the hydrogen. Okay, this fan is really big. This fan is really expensive. The condenser is expensive. Okay, if the nitrogen is fluid, uh, that is maybe easy. But then you need to transport this all in pipes, stainless steel or whatsoever. The thing is, I would say, this would be bloody expensive. And now the question is, what's ammonia worth? Ammonia in small quantities, yes, Obviously, they, uh, they say you need 30 to 70 grams per square meter of ammonia for your crop. And one kilogram of ammonia is worth about one euro or one dollar. So you will need to produce three million kilograms of ammonia in 10 years to get a cost-benefit analysis which is in a plus line. I hope you found this interesting. I just like this idea of this organic farm with hydrogen production. I thank you very much to come along with me. You don't have to give me a like. It was fun to make this video and I wish you a lovely day. See you. Bye.